Hey guys, and welcome to a battle featuring the legendary Sergeant Spaghetti and his Dowie forces up against Lagzy of Extreme Meme Team and his Beastmen Hordes. We are on the Pillar of Bone here. I'm going to have to pause the battle straight away. As, as you can see, we have some pretty interesting builds straight out of the gate. And of course, the battle does get underway very quickly. Now, apologies in advance if my voice does sound a little off. That last Skaven replay has seemed to have uh, passed the plague onto me. But uh, we shall cleanse ourselves with some glorious Dowie action. So in the front vanguard here for the forces of the Dowie and Sergeant Spaghetti, we have miners with blast and charges dotted all the way along. Pretty decent troops overall up against beastmen. Blast and charges help clear out gore and ungore herds very effectively. We also have Norgrim's Ironbreakers as well. I always forget these guys have Vanguard, the elite of the elite as far as the dwarves go. 125 armor and a ton of blast and charges. Immune to psychology. These guys are really quite powerful. Full, just very expensive troops. And I'm assuming that this uh, high vanguard line is to try and buffer and slow down the enemy to allow the rest of his force to get a bit more time to put in that decent long range damage. Now in the front line of this main force we have cheap and cheerful dwarf warriors dotted all the way along. Pretty sturdy, should be able to hold back basic ungles and gores all day long. And then we have a ton of quarrelers with great weapons. And I haven't seen these guys in action for absolutely ages, but the great weapons should allow them to fend off units of harpies and hounds and the like. And overall, crossbows very good up against the beastmen. Do decent damage to their hordes, and units like minotaurs and spawn rushes also can go down to consistent fire. We have one unit of Dwarf Warriors in the back line as well for a little bit of protection. And then a double hero core in the very centre. We have Gotrek, the world's greatest or worst slayer, depending on how you look at it. He obviously slays many a beast, but he has yet to fulfil his slayer oath. Coming in with Gotrek's Doom, Deadly Onslaught, as well as Heroic Fortitude. So of course, Unbreakable, fantastic against large threats, which the Beastmen do often bring here. We also have Thorgrim Grudgebearer. Now, I think this is a fantastic pick. He's a very underused character in my opinion personal opinion. He's come with Stand Ground, as well as Oath of Vengeance, a very powerful hex ability, as well as the Great Book of Grudges, plus 9 melee attack to all nearby troops, and here's a fantastic answer for chariots, believe it or not. We'll get into that a little bit more as the battle does uh, kind of unfold. On either flank as well, we have Iron Drakes, the Flamethrower variety, of course that uh, negative the leadership, very good up against the Beastmen. And for the Beastmen force, we have a lovely Vanguard of Harpies, four in fact in the back lines, as well as some Hounds and a ton of Ungor Herds. It's really fun to see Beastmen played in this style, so massive shout out to Lagzy here for going pretty crazy and dropping his entire kind of main battle line on this flank. Over for his, uh, I suppose, deployment zone forces, we do have a Razor Gore Chariot, a unit you don't get to see terribly often, but good AP, good mass as well to push through the Dowie forces, and then we have a Mino Rush. We have Triple Minotaurs, looks like these guys are just going to be the dual wielding axe variety, so a little bit cheaper and still do some very deadly damage. Of course, we have a another Chariot here, a Brilliant Shaman of Beast, coming with Manticore and Amber Spear. Big fan of those picks. Amber Spear can rake down the ranks of the enemy and do some huge work. And of course, Manticores are always very powerful. We also have Morgan the Shadow Gave, the only real competitive Beastmen Lord, in my opinion. He's just so much more uh, kind of better than the other lords. They can do bits, but the fact he can spawn uh, so many Chaos spawn is uh, really powerful. So without further ado here, guys, let's get this underway. Now, this uh, poor minor front line with the Ironbreakers is going to be in pretty deep trouble. Their Blast and Charlies aren't fantastic against any of the units they are currently facing, and they are horribly out of position from their allies here. But it looks like they are going to be saved a little bit and allowed to pull back if they so are deemed necessary, as the Minotaurs are running directly in, wanting to shut down these Iron Drakes as quickly as possible. And the big old blob is running forward, but we see arrows and fa fire gouts in response here to the charge. Doing some pretty decent damage to these Minotaurs. Without their shields, they are certainly take a bit of a pounding, but now these Iron Drakes are in for a fight of a lifetime. Manticore Summon has gone up to add to the pressure here, and the Harpies swoop down on top of the Quarrelers. But Quarrelers, pretty damn sturdy all round. 80 armor is pretty impressive, and with the help of the Dwarf Warriors, who don't have to worry about any frontline engagements, pulling back, they should be able to rescue the Quarrelers relatively well. We have Miners and Ironbreakers as well, trying to fall back to the main situation. And it looks like the Norgrim Ironbreakers do indeed catch one Razor God Chariot as well, should perhaps be able to bring that mighty chariot down. Now over on the left-hand flank of the Dowie formation, where the enemy did strike first, 
We do have the hero core of Gotrek and Fulgrim who fight him back to back are going to be an absolute pain. But good play by Lagzi here. He's not letting all his troops, troops get caught up. He's kind of dedicated quite a few there. Maybe one to uh, many to take down heroes. But he's flooding down the lines of Angor herds. Trying to get into the softer underbelly of the Stary Force. Which of course is the Quarrelers. He wants to shut those guys down as they're one of the best answers in this build. To the Chaos of Spawn and uh, Minotaur. Looks like the Bray Shaman Odd Beast is going to quite happily roll through the Miners of Blasting charges here. Pulling himself through. Chariots are a massive problem for the Dwarves. And that's where I think a Foregrim can come into play. He is fantastic mass and I do not believe he can physically be pushed over. So you wait for the Chariots to come in. You counter charge with Foregrim and they hit a big old Dowie wall. As you can see, taking the damage here for Gotrek and allowing Gotrek to kind of pound down these Minotaurs is going to be some really good play overall. Although Ungor Herds are here, if they get a full surround on Gotrek, they can certainly do the business. Norgrim Ironbreakers have fallen back here into Boris. They have a perfect opportunity right here in this big blob of Ungors to get their blasting charges off. Elsewhere, the Dwarfs are really starting to struggle. It's the consistent pressure of Chaos Spawn and Harpies and Chariots are really roaming through these troops. Looks like some blasting charges did go to Morgo, but he's not really going to take too much damage. It looks like the Norgrim Ironbreakers are unleashing a salvo of blasting charges and absolutely decimating these units, getting huge value here. Up to 30 kills with one volley there. And as the second volley goes in, all the way up to 53. That's pretty crazy value straight out of the gate. Doing a surprise amount of work to these Minotaurs as well. Any damage you can accumulate on these guys, of course they have no chance of regenerating. So Gotrek is going to be a rather happy fellow dealing with those guys. Looks like they have started to peel off as well to try and deal with the Iron Breakers, which is a good idea. We do have the second Manticore Summon coming down now. And this is where the Beastmen really need to use their added mobility to hunt down troops. Take the Chaos Warhounds, take the Beast of Harpies, and hunt down these beleaguered and kind of very knackered Dwarf forces. Force them all off and force that balance of power into army losses, which is getting very, very close. Beastmen really in a dominant position here. It looks like they may be able to carry this through. One problem they are having at the moment is the hero core of Thorgrim and Gotrek, and of course the loyal bodyguard of the Norgrim Iron Breakers, but they are heavily outnumbered at this point. Well, not too bad, I suppose, but a lot of the enemies are gigantic, terrifying Minotaurs, who do come in for a lovely side charge on top of those Iron Breakers, but a lot of Beastmen forces are falling back as well. Not the most sturdy of troops, at least compared to the Dwarfs. Lovely play here by Lagzi and his Beastmen, using one unit of Ungols to chase off four units of Quarrelers is really fantastic value, and it looks like he is hunting down other units across the field as well. We do have an Oath of Vengeance popping in on top of the Minotaurs, good play, lowering up their defence, allowing the Norgrim Ironbreakers to you know, pack a decent punch against them, and hopefully get go tricking in here, who has popped all his buffs as well. Norgrim standing firm though, still over 3,900 health, which is pretty insane stuff. Also has some pretty cool attack animations from on top of his mighty chair. Now in lore, his chair is ridiculously powerful, but of course they have to kind of balance that out for the game. I believe it has a rune encarved on it, or engraved in it, uh, which if they had a second rune like that, it would actually like destroy the world or something. It's so powerful, you can only have one or, you know, ridiculous kind of crazy Warhammer stuff. Reservoir Chariots and Chaos Warhounds are going to launch in once more, and he needs to be cycle charging. He's definitely wants to get good value from the Chariots, as well as the Grey Shaman Chariot, and consistently cycle charge these Iron Breakers, break them off, or perhaps try and assassinate Gotrek, as he is rather squishy with just zero armour. Leave Fulgrim to the end, where you can completely surround him or shatter him off the field, as he is not unbreakable. Looks like the Harpies doing a good job hunting down Dwarf Roads on the flank. We have some more Harpies who can come back to the main engagement. And Quarrelers are being shut down as well by the Ungor Herds. But apart from that, we have some Dwarf Warriors rallying in the distance. And a load of Beastmen forces who have the potential to rally, including this lone Minotaur. But apart from that, it's pretty much what you see is what you get here. We do have an Amber Spear coming from the Grey Shaman. Lovely play, bringing him up the mountain to uh, Kobe that shot down. Doing some pretty decent damage all round. Stand around has been popped by Forgrim, though, certainly going to help out Gotrek in this situation as well. If you have a look at the Iron Breakers at this point, their melee defense is currently 106 with 125 armor. They are just not going down at all. And with the Over Vengeance on the Minotaurs, they're certainly going to drag those guys down very effectively. Just nine melee defense left on these guys. And with the Minotaurs going down, perhaps there is hope yet for the Dowie forces. 
Army losses is still pretty close. Balance power does not favour them at all. And Gotrek is nearly dead, but it looks like he does get his healing proc here, which is absolutely huge, as it's going to keep him in the fight a little bit longer, and here's the best answer to all of these chariots the opponent does bring here. Looks like harpies are uh, floating high up in the skies. And we have some dwarves who are slowly trundling back to the main engagement. But I think by the time they get here, the battle will probably be decided one way or another. Razor Chariots are doing some cycle charging into the Norgrim Ironbreakers who are holding firm. They're uh, taking quite a beating at this point, but up to 226 kills is pretty crazy stuff. But they are now being uh, charged consistently by harpies and Razor Chariots. Their leadership's probably going to get a little bit low. Looks like Thorgrim considered pulling out of the fight there for a moment. But a lot of Beastman forces starting to shatter and chain round here. As Morga is left to stand alone, the rest of his forces do not want to mess with the elite of the Dowie warriors. Harpies are floating back here as well, but the Beastmen need to rally to Morga here. No summons left, so it is kind of him against the world. And I don't know if they're going to be able to bring down Thorgrim as well as Gotrek here. Morgrim Ironbreakers as well, a uh, pretty tough block here for them to get through. In the distance, we do have uh, Korra's eventually going to be going down quite heroically to Ungol Raiders, though, holding back the tide a little bit longer to allow the hero core to really do the decent damage. And those dwarf warriors actually made it back to the fight, which is pretty impressive. And with a stand your ground popped and a heroic vow on their lips, it looks like they may be able to carry the day. Ungols have broken, and Morgan the Shadow Gave, with the Oath of Vengeance popped on him, was dragged down by those elite Dowie troops. Bray Shaman or Beast is floating away here, perhaps can come back in with an Amber Spear, and it looks like he's doing a rear shot into Thorgrim. And it does cut it quite well. I think if he'd perhaps done the Amber Spears into Gotrek, imagine uh, two more Amber Spears worth of damage off him right now, he'd probably on Death's bed here. We're going to fast forward a little bit as it looks like there's going to be a little bit of Benny Hill time as uh, the dwarves very desperately kind of trudge after Morga here. Looks like we are getting ready for a final showdown as the uh, remainder of both forces do line up against each other. Gotrek gets a little bit uh, over ambitious here but it seems to pull, uh, kind of work for him. He managed to pull it off as the Bray Shaman does get over Avengers popped on him and with one hit it looks like he's already wavering and starting to break and for the first time in the battle the balance of power is in the Dowie favour. And uh, they are going to advance here against the Beast Men. Thorgrim leading the charge gloriously, although he's going to uh, float back a little bit, he seems, to his secondary line. Of course, you do have to protect the king. And he's probably just waiting for some of the more elite troops to rock in. Good play as well to leave the Brayshaw out of this until the oath has worn off. The Ungor herds crash in against the Dwarf Warriors, but with the Iron Breakers here, it's certainly going to be quite tough. Very well uh, timed stand or ground on top of these Dowie forces is probably going to allow them to succeed here, I would say. Looks like the Ungors are all starting to waver against the might of the elite Dowie. Dwarf Warriors being a uh, few of them few of them are being dragged down but every dwarf that does get felled it looks like multiple beastmen are falling to the ground ironbreaker is going to push away that brave shaman and allow the king to do his duty looks like he's actually going after morga personally for a one-on-one -on -one engagement which is very bold of him although gotrek is getting involved as well of course probably quite grumpy he's not about to fill his oath for another day He's going to be jumping in and uh, cutting limbs and smacking uncles around as well. Morga has 1,200 health and is by no means a pushover in combat. But against two mighty Dwarf Warriors, I think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for him. Dwarf Warriors do start to break here. And uh, it is going to be left very kind of a few troops each. A lovely Amber Spear is going to be coming down the flank here. But it looks like the Bray Shaman actually breaks before he can pop it off. And that is going to be a Pyrrhic victory there for the Dwarves. Fantastic game by both players with two really interesting styles of play. And it's always fun to see these kind of builds in action. So massive shout out to Sergeant Spaghetti for sending this in via my Discord. As well for Lagsy for making a really awesome game with some really fun builds. Once again guys, apologies for my voice today, I can feel it kind of dying, <laughs> um, but yeah, I've just got a bit of a cold unfortunately, but still, hopefully the audio was still all good. If you guys did enjoy, feel free to give the video a big old thumbs up and subscribe for more Total War Warhammer content. I'm probably going to drop any over the next uh, weekend, I may drop one, uh, but I'm going to try and give my voice time to recover. Anyway, for the builds, really fun build, as I said before. I do like the idea of the really advanced vanguard um, with the quarrelers to support and kind of rack up the damage. But unfortunately, the quarrelers didn't really manage to pay for themselves at all. They kind of got swarmed very early. And I think 
the uh, Vanguard is a little bit risky, especially against Beastmen who have the potential to Vanguard back very aggressively. However, the uh, Norgrim Ironbreakers in particular, as well as some of the Miners, did manage to pull back and get those Blast and Charges off and still do a decent amount of damage. Norgrim Ironbreakers being real MVPs here, 265 kills, helping to clear out that chaff, as well as protect the King and Gotrek. That Lord combo, or Lord and Hero combo, is very powerful and deadly, and a good answer to Chariots in my opinion. Thorgrim takes the charge, and Gotrek does the damage. As for Lagsy, you can see massive kills on the Chariots as expected, 107 and 85, and good diligent play hunting down the enemy troops where possible. His one problem was getting his Minotaurs mixed up with Gotrek, where they then couldn't kind of crush the rest of the build. I think the uh, Ungols in particular needed to be the ones to surround him and drag down the uh, legendary Dowie Warrior. Anyway guys, until next time, peace peace, and as always, stay awesome.